This is Chris from the Atomic Pitch Wax, and you're watching Heavy New York. What's up, everybody? It's Alex from Heavy New York. We are back at Elsewhere in Brooklyn, and we return with a familiar face, Chris, of the Atomic Bitch Wax. Thank you for your time. Yeah, man. Glad to see you again, too. It's been, what, uh, about a year? Uh, something like that? I think maybe like 10 months or something like that. Black on the Black Label Society Conan yep. tour. Yeah, it was good times, man. Yeah. So. But uh, the last time I spoke to you, I don't think you even announced that you were working on new music. But now that you are, uh, you know, you said you, you're releasing it around May. Are you planning to make like a direct follow up to Force Fields? Or do you think that this is going to be almost like a new start or a new entity for the Atomic Bitch Wax? Uh, well, I mean, it, this is the first. The, the new one that's coming out in May is going to have uh, Garrett Sweeney playing guitar. So uh, so it definitely, you know, he put his flavor into it. It's still like, you know, the same... Uh, you know, the same style and everything like that. But this is, you know, I know the guitar player's take on it. And when you're a trio, you know, one guy changes that makes a difference, you know. So, so hopefully, hold on a second. Okay. There you go. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, so, yeah, so there's going to be like a, uh, it's just someone, someone else's interpretation of it. You know, like I, I, we never tell each other what to play. And I think that's been the beauty of the band the whole time. It's like... You know, we're not particularly trying to sound like one thing. We never started off that way. Like the band, originally <clears throat> 20 years ago, the band started off with just, you know, three guys smoking a lot of weed in the basement. Nobody wanted to be the singer. And we just would jam and jam. We came up with all these riffs. And then little by little, I reluctantly started screaming into a mic, you know, in the easy parts. Like, you know, it always would be like, you know, all these like diddly 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 kind of riffs. And then anytime there was breaks, it would just be like, you bitch, you know, or something like that, you know. And 20 years later, you know, I actually, you know, got some confidence and started being able to sing and play at the same time. And, uh, and this is where we're at. So, you know. Bringing in a new guitar player has had to bring in, because you mentioned like it brings in some newer elements, but it doesn't really distance or change things up from the previous catalog, right? No, and what's really cool too is... Uh, is you know Garrett's from Monster Magnet as well, and uh, Bob's from Monster Magnet, and uh, and I just played in Monster Magnet for like six years. I actually just left last summer, so but I mean I've been playing with these guys for years, so the the transition from you know going from one guitar player to a different one wasn't like really that jarring because I had already been playing with Garrett for years in another band, so. He knows what I'm going to do. I know what he's going to do. And then we both know what Bob's going to do. So it's great. Like songwriting was a breeze because we had been playing together for so many years already. And uh, when Finn left the band, I guess about a year ago, uh, we had a tour lined up already, like right before he left. And uh, we didn't want to cancel the tour. So he said to Garrett, you know, do you think you could play these, uh, play this, play these shows, play these songs? And in like two weeks, you know, we slapped together a, you know, a good solid 40 minutes. There was a couple covers in there because it was a, really wasn't a lot of time to really get it together. But now we've had over a year and, you know, he could probably play the whole catalog now. You know what I mean? So, so you know, we're in great shape. New record coming out. Uh, they just re-released the first album that's 20 years old this year. And uh, they just re-released it maybe like, uh, uh, maybe like two weeks ago, something like that. And uh, so... So it's kind of cool. It's like because the band's got, you know, some years to it, there's a lot of younger guys that were way too young to see us back in the day. So, you know, we become that band that we're so old, we're new again. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. And I, can, maybe since it's 20 years old, can we maybe be expecting like an anniversary tour and playing that record in full or something like that? Well, in, in a sense, I guess you could say this, this particular one is sort of, sort of that. We're, we didn't really want to make a big deal about it. So uh, I think tonight we get 40 minutes, maybe 45 minutes. And so we'll probably play like four or five songs from the first album tonight. Yeah. Could every album, I just started asking bands this, every album in a band's catalog, is it like representative of who you and Bob and everybody were at that particular time? Or like, is it, is, do you guys not even think about that? It's just writing songs. You mean like as far yeah. as writing new stuff now? Or? Yeah, like is, do you almost kind of look at your previous catalog as like a photo album? Like this is who we were at that time and maybe you're a, it's sort of like in a way like a different band. No, because there's so many elements from even back then and 
<clears throat> my, you know, for me, my writing style really hasn't changed that much. You know what I mean? Like I still like the same music that I liked back then. Um, I definitely listened to a lot more music since then in the last 20 years, or I would hope I did. And, uh, you know, playing in Monster Magnet too was a, was a game changer for me too, because Dave is like a really good songwriter. You know what I mean? Like he, he, um, he just, he, he found a formula that, and, and really made it work. And by playing someone else's material, you start realizing like, oh, this is why he does it like this. And this is why he puts this part here and that part there. And so I started taking those things and incorporating them into the last couple records. You know, it's, it was really, really cool, you know, to have, to have someone like that, to be like, you know, why did you do it that way? And you know what I mean? And you know, your stuff starts to take on like this, you know, this, 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 new, not necessarily new, but a better way of you, the way, the way that you used to do it. You know what I mean? I, you know, it's just cl- kind of cleaner and, and, uh, you know, I guess when you hear the new record, I think you'll know what I'm talking about. It's, it's, it's definitely Atomic Bitch Wax all the way, but there's like this, uh, there's like this new kind of like, uh, like a like a roundness to it now everything everything makes sense it's not so uh so like some some of our early stuff was really haphazard and we, you know we were just all over the place just because we were we were young we really didn't know how to write like a structured song we would just be like that sounds cool and let's stick this to it and then now that sounds cool and the songs kind of had a like a very jarring thing about it maybe that was a magic thing of, that it used to do I, I you know i don't really know you know from my point of view, I think that uh, that we've really matured as a band, and we're a much better band now than we were 20 years ago. But some people will, you know, it, it's like any it's like any band. Everybody will always be like, "Dude, their first record was the best, dude." You know, it's always that. You know what I mean? So. It's a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. If you if you experiment too much, you sell out. You put the same record out, you're a repetitive band. So I think in the end, just doing what you want to do and doing what you like is the right answer. Yeah. And uh, the final question I wanted to ask you is, you know, the first time I ever saw the Atomic Bitch Wax, you know, speaking of younger fans, that was my first time uh, the Black Label Society Conan tour. Uh, really enjoyed that performance. And I thought it was very different from simply listening to you guys for so many years. So do you put in a similar energy playing live as you do when you're songwriting, or are they two completely separate arts altogether? Uh, well, definitely playing live is definitely, you know, it, it has like this, uh, it has like this, this edge to it to where you know you're playing to the best of your ability and even maybe a little bit past what you're able to do and so that's the magic of the whole thing is like when everybody's really maxing out like dude this is the best I can play and he's playing the best he can play and he's playing the best he can play and it doesn't fall apart that's the that's what you're shooting for is to bring it right to this edge to be like this is this is it this is you know but when you're writing uh, a record and you're recording in a studio, there's a lot of stop and go, and you could try 10 different things. When you're live, it's now, and it's, you know, prove it now. You know what I mean? So you really, you know, tend to go for it, you know, for lack of better words. Yeah, there's no multiple takes in the yeah, live. Yeah, this is it. Yeah, there's no multiple takes. And, um, you know, in the studio, it's cool. I mean, it's not to say that, the, you know, you could try a song five different ways, and all five ways are cool, but now you got to pick one. But when you're playing live, it's like this is how it sounds right now, and you got to own it and sell it, you know. So, so before we go, I'd like to thank you so much for coming back on. Always great talking to you guys. Yeah, man, I appreciate I'll, it. Yep, I'll have yeah. more questions for you for the next time you come around. Okay. Yeah. Is there just uh, anything else uh, that you would like to promote in terms of tour dates? You have this tour right now with Weed Eater, but uh, just uh, can we be expecting with the new album yeah, scheduled? When, when the new record comes out, we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do some more dates in June in the States. And then, uh, then we're going to Europe, uh, from mid June to mid July. And then, uh, and then we're going to go to Australia and Japan in, uh, October, awesome. beginning of October. Well, so. well, Chris, great to see you again. Everybody, Chris of the atomic bitch wax, new music coming very soon. We'll see you next time on heavy New York. All right.